In this class, <clears throat> we're going to talk a little bit more about um, business characteristics and the form that you would like to, to take. And then we'll talk a little bit about business plans. <clears throat> so let's spend some time here talking about characteristics, right? The type of business you choose is going to be dependent on certain things, right? Or the the form of business, that is proprietorships, uh, partnerships, corporations, etc. So what are those things? Number one, the type of business is important. The risks that are within those types of business uh, will certainly be the, the biggest characteristics of which form you'll take. Your ability to raise cash, uh, capital, and your ability and your uh, uh, the taxation um, that um, you're most interested in paying, right? So all of these are characteristics. So if you think about the characteristics, number one, liability, right? Liability talks about being sued. So what happens if a business is sued? Uh, only one of two things can happen. You'll either win or you'll lose the lawsuit. If you lose the lawsuit, the question is, where does the money come from to pay the penalty? Now, this depends on what kind of business form you are. If you are a sole proprietorship or um, a partnership, a general partnership, all the owners are responsible for all the obligations of the business. So not only the business's assets, but also your personal assets are at risk in those kinds of business forms. To achieve what we refer to as being limited liability, that is how much you can lose is limited by how much you have invested, right? You can only lose the business. They cannot come after your personal assets. This is the type of liability that's covered in corporations, in uh, LLCs, in uh, certain forms of the uh, for certain for the limited shareholder uh, partners in a limited partnerships, um, subchapter S's, right? All of these other types they have what's referred to as limited liability. So the riskier your business the more likely you'd want to be one of the latter where uh, you wouldn't have any risk to your personal assets. Taxes are very important. Uh, we've talked in the past about how taxes are calculated and, and certainly whatever organization you take, you want to minimize the tax that you have to pay. You can't avoid taxation. But it's silly to pay taxes if there are ways for you to get around that process. Financial support, right? What, where's the money come from to build this business? The bigger you want the business to be and the, the, the greater influence you may want to have in a more global environment, the more likely you'll need more money, which means you may have to move to business forms that spread out some of the ownership. So you may have to incorporate in order to get the kind of money that's necessary. And then the last parts here, you know, what what is it that you want? What, what is the owner's desire for a business? And the type and location of the business is certainly going to be incorporate, important. I mean, you, you can't see... Uh, I, I don't see a car manufacturer uh, organizing itself as a sole proprietorship. It's way too much cash is need, way too much uh, uh, liability and risk involved. So the type and business location is also going to drive the kind of business you want to choose. Now, when you decide that you want to start a business, what do you do, right? We have to create a plan, right? If you go to a bank and you say, hey, you know, I would like to borrow $50,000 to start a business, 
the bank is going to say, great, well, what can you tell me about your business? They want a plan. Now, as we'll mention several times throughout the, this, the rest of this chapter and throughout some of the rest of the course, there is software that is available that you can utilize to build one of these business plans. But the first thing we want to kind of talk a little bit about is a SWOT analysis. It's going to be a part and parcel of everything that you do, uh, especially when you're strategic uh, in the mode of strategic planning. You need to be able to identify the strengths and weaknesses that are internal to your business, right? Strengths are the core competencies, those things that are internal that you are good at, that are gonna help you with your business succeed. Weaknesses then are those things that you identify as things that you need, things that you need to work on to develop the company. Now, opportunities and threats are external to the business. So the opportunities are, you know, how can you grow in, the, in your community, right? How are you gonna prosper? Right? What are the factors that are outside your business that are going to help you to grow and build? Threats are obviously those things that impede growth. Right? Is it <clears throat> local uh, regulation? Right? Is it uh, zoning boards? Right? What are those things near you that may stop or impede your actual growth? You need to have an understanding of all of these things to kind of understand the potential for your company and again, to create a plan to move forward. So what is the business plan? The first part of a business plan is something called an executive summary. It's going to, in very short, shorter types of uh, descriptions, if you will, it's going to identify these parts. What's your strategy for success? What's the description of your market, your products? Describe your current management team. What, do you, what are you looking for that? Do you have a summary of revenue and expenses, right? How much money do you think it will be needed and what's it going to be used for? In more general terms, right, we, we need to have some more specificity, right? What is, the, what is your company's mission statement? What are their goals or objectives? Do you have a business philosophy? What form do you want to create? Products and services. Do you have a marketing plan? Operational plans? One of the things you might recognize here is this is not a weekend project, right? It is going to take time to develop these thoughts, these concepts, and to get them into a form that can be presented to someone. So you're gonna need things like brochures, industry studies, maybe some maps of location areas, right? What kind of equipment do you need? Leases, contracts, right? All of these things are gonna be necessary as part of this business plan. And you may be asking somebody, an investor, it doesn't have to be a bank, you could be asking an investor to give you half million dollars. You better have some information for them to look at. <clears throat> In the end, assuming we have our business started, one of the things I think that's critical that's missed in many business plans is what's referred to as succession planning, right? You have to have a business plan is kind of like how you get into a business Succession planning is how do you get out of the business? And in the case of succession plan, we're essentially talking about what happens if the entrepreneur, something bad happens to them. What happens to the business, right? So there's, a, again, a little video here on succession planning. I think it's kind of informative, gives you a little bit of idea about the critical nature of this process, right? How do you develop this? Um, frequently with succession planning, you're going to have to employ a lawyer uh, for some of the documentation, right? You might have to uh, employ, um, you might have to use some um, um, 
insurance people because you may need some type of a of an insurance policy to cover paying off a, a partner's uh, interest should they should they die so there's lots of things we need to be worried about and concerned about so the succession plan is something we frequently forget about where does the money come from for the business, right? You know, it's a critical piece. We frequently don't think about this in any great detail until we get to the point that we actually need the money, right? We need to know how much we need, how it's gonna be used. We need to be fairly specific. If you go to a bank and ask them for a half million dollars, you say, hey, well, I have a building that's gonna cost 200,000, I need this piece of equipment that's going to cost forty thousand. I'm going to need some seed money to buy inventory, etc. You need to have a plan. You need to talk about uh, is there collateral that might be offered for the loan. <clears throat> so where are we going to go? Personal assets, right? It's typically how most small businesses start. We may try to get some type of equity financing, right? Might have to use some collateral. We may have to employ what are referred to as venture capitalists. These are outside investors who help uh, emerging companies to get started. The challenge is they don't do that for free. Sometimes they're very expensive. Sometimes they want a piece of the pie, if you will. So if you're a sole proprietor, you probably don't want to use a venture capitalist because they may want to uh, own a piece of your business. So by de definition, you're no longer a sole proprietor. There is the SBA, right? The Small Business Association. And again, in general, <clears throat> the SBA is not a lender, right? It is, they're a guarantor of a percentage of the loan. So the SBA is a government agency that you apply for this guarantee. You take that guarantee as part of your business plan. You take that to the bank and the SBA says, we will guarantee to the bank 60% of this loan. So that way you have, or the bank has some assurance that at least they'll get some of their money back should something happen uh, to the business. <clears throat> Investors obviously increase company equity, right? The challenge is they expect positive returns. Again, I mentioned this a little bit earlier. They may want uh, some controlling uh, interest in the company. They may want to control some aspects of the company. So we have lots of types of investors who may want to invest in the company. There is the potential for grant money. There are times where you can apply to different organizations, if you will, could be the government, for instance, and you would ask them to provide money. The difference between an investor and a grantor is that the grantor doesn't have to be paid back as long as the services for which the grant was provided are performed, right? So if you say, hey, I'm gonna start this business and you start the business, if it's a grant, you won't have to return that money to um, whoever the organization was. So if you can get grants, that's a great way to get started. Um, of course, the competition for grants is gonna be uh, intense. Finally, the last thing I'd like you to do is just take, take some time and, and look at these two videos. One talks about leadership versus management. And then there's a two minute uh, discussion of how Steve Jobs and how they approach the management issue at, um, at Apple. So again, that's the end of uh, this chapter. Um, I look forward to seeing you in further, further videos.